An important factor in how well a guitar is going to play is having level frets. So level frets means that when the neck is straight, the top of all the frets are level relative to each other, i.e. no fret is higher or lower than any of the others. So we want the frets level because it enables us to, to be able to have the lowest action possible without experiencing any fret buzz. So action is the height of the string above the fret. And fret buzz is an unwanted noise caused by the string touching a fret higher up the fingerboard when you're playing a note. Fret unevenness can be caused by poor installation or levelling of the frets to begin with, uh, wear on the frets, movement of the frets due to changes in temperature, humidity and other reasons. Um, and also a lot of guitars have slightly uneven frets right out of the box, so brand new guitars often need the, the frets level too. So there's many different ways to level the frets and a lot of different tools available for each part of the process. So in this video I'm just going to basically show the way that I do it. Um, and also try to use as few specialist tools as possible. Um, but there are a few tools that I think are necessary, and these include a leveling beam or anything that has a dead flat surface on it, a notched straight edge, because you have to be able to check the neck must be flat before you begin, um, some sort of file to reshape the frets once they're level, uh, masking tape, and a range of different grits of sandpaper. Um, I use 220 up to 2000 grit papers in this video. So here's a 60th anniversary Fender Telecaster done American Standard that came to me because it's had a pretty bad fret job done on it. Um, so let's get started and first job is get the neck straight. So here's the neck with a notch straight edge on it and everything's pretty much okay up until about the 12th fret and then the neck really starts to look at the really starts to fall away and by the time we get up to the the end there's a huge gap under there so this neck has an enormous back bow on it So you just want to make small careful adjustments here, um, an eighth of a turn, quarter of a turn, don't be yanking it round and round, um, and keep checking with the, the straight edge to see what's happening with the neck, and once you get it straight all the way along, that's it done. So we can have a better look at how level the frets are using a fret rocker, um, basically the theory is um, it's a straight edge, a flat edge that spans over three frets and if it rocks it means that the fret in the middle is higher than the two at either side um, and you just work your way up the fingerboard um, checking each fret. As I go I just mark on the, the frets that are really high to give me an idea of what's going on. So this is a situation with the, the neck once I've marked up all the frets that I've found to be high. Um, if it had just been a couple of frets I would have uh, um, addressed them first before levelling the, the entire fretboard. But because there's, there's so much here I think the best thing to do is just get the sanding beam out and, and level, the entire, level the entire board. So this is a levelling beam, uh, basically it's a piece of square aluminium with a ground flat side here, a ground flat side here, um, that are dead level and dead flat. So on here I've got a worn piece of um, 220 and a worn piece of 320 grit sandpaper. And the theory is, as you move the block along the frets, it'll level them all flat. So because the bottom of this is dead flat, all that we should touch is the, the high frets on the first few passes with the levelling beam. 
So in order to keep an eye on what we're doing, I'm going to mark the frets either side of the high frets with a different colour marker pen. And just to see if when they're getting touched, if they're getting touched. Because what we want to do here is take as little material off the frets as possible, but get them dead level. So after that 10 seconds of sanding we can see on this fret that's the purple marker where it was low and that hasn't been touched and down here is the black marker where it was high and you can see that that's been sanded that's getting flat on the top there's the, the blue one sorry not purple it looks purple on the screen but it's actually a blue pen that hasn't been touched so the idea is we want to keep keep sanding until Basically all this black is gone from here, um, but we want to try and be a bit careful because like I say we want to take as little as possible off these off these frets because well A we want to keep as much fret wire there for the customer so the frets last a long time and they're nice and high and B the less we take off the less work we have to do crowning them um, after we're finished with this. So we'll carry on just now with the sand and beam. A couple of things to think about. You don't need to put pressure on this sanding beam. I'm putting no pressure on it at all. It's just the weight of the, the beam itself that's, that's doing the work. You don't need to push down on it. Another thing is remember to come all the way to the edge of the frets. Although you, you feel you're going too far and try to keep the radius correct or else you end up with something like this where there's still black pen, then it's flat and then there's black pen so you need to make sure that you're you're coming right to the edge of the fret as well like over the edge with the sanding beam so the center of the sanding beam is on the very edge of the fret don't round them over don't come at an angle but just be conscious that you get right to the edge of the frets so here we have a fret that was high you can see it's there's bits of black pen still on the side and either side is the blue pen on that. So you can see that on the one that was high the black pen has been taken off but none of the blue pen has been touched at all and that means that the chances are, unless we've been very lucky, this fret is still a little bit high and we can see that, I don't know if I can do this without getting my hands all over the camera I don't know if you can see that, but I can feel that that still moves. It still rocks. So that fret is still a little bit high. Basically what will tell us when this fret is level with this fret and this fret is when we take a tiny skiff of the blue pen off of both of these. And that's when we know that these three flat frets are completely level with each other. This isn't the way that everyone would do it. A lot of people, they would just mark pen on all the frets right from the start. Um, and, and that's fine. I prefer to do it the way that I've shown so far. Just so it just lets you know what's happening a little bit better. You know where your high frets are. You know where your low frets are. You know what to keep a look at. Now we've got all the frets a lot closer. So now we can skiff and get them all completely level.
so we can now see by looking at the pen wax that everywhere from fret 1 to fret 12 all the pen both black and blue has been touched at some point except on this fret so that we're figuring is the lowest fret um, we knew that that was a high one next to it because it had black pen that one was a low because it had blue pen that has now been touched but this one hasn't been touched at all so we can figure that's our lowest fret so we keep sanding down until we touch that pen but this fret next to it it never had any pen on it at all because it was neither a high fret nor was it next to a high fret so we have no way of being certain that that this one rather isn't our lowest fret it would also make sense since this one and the one that still has pen on it are next to each other there they're both obviously quite low frets compared to the other two so what we're going to do now is we're going to mark up the whole fingerboard all the frets from 1 to 12 and and then take very light passes until pen on each fret has been touched and then we can be certain that they're completely level Now after that 10 seconds of sanding, I'd say 90% of the pen is gone from fret 1 up to fret 12, almost all of it. Um, and you see a little smidge in here, this was the fret that was never marked and has never been touched. This was the fret that still had the blue pen on it. So these are the two low frets and there's a little, just the very end of this fret here hasn't been touched. Everything else, just with these few passes, that the pen has gone. So now we're watching these two frets taking passes and we're waiting until we start to see the pen gone on them and then we stop completely down at this end of the fingerboard. That's it level. And then we move up to the top and we'll have a look at that. Well that's us at the stage now where all the pen is gone, there's frets 5 and 6 where the pen was remaining and you can see they're still pretty rounded, they've just been skiffed on the top whereas some of the other frets, um, you can see that one, these, they're, they're a lot flatter because they've had more taken off them but that's all the pen gone up to the, the 12th fret. Um, so we know that that's now perfectly level, we don't want to sand on them anymore. So now we're going to put one thin piece of tape over the 11th fret um, and then sand on the fall away up at the top of the guitar. So the setup that we have here is a piece of tape covering the 11th fret and a piece of tape on the end of the sanding beam so that the sanding beam will only sand um, frets uh, 12 to 22 and also it will be on a very slight angle to sand a, a, a slight fall away in the frets um, once we get closer to getting rid of all the pen we'll probably put a couple more layers of tape over the 11th fret to raise that end of the sanding beam a little bit just to get the angle that we want on the fall away
So that's the whole fingerboard sanded with a leveling beam. So the frets are now level. Um, of course the next thing to do is to what's called crowning the frets and that makes them round again on the top because we've been sanding over the top of them with a flat beam. It means that especially the frets that were high are now flat on the top. You can see here that the fret in the foreground must have been a high fret because it's pretty flat whereas the fret behind it still looks relatively crowned. Um, so it must have been quite a low fret, it hasn't had so much sanded off it. And we need to get them all crowned, all rounded back over. Um, so normally I would use a, well, a, a, a diamond fret crowning file. Um, but I'm going to do it just with a, an, um, a triangular file today, just to show that you don't need the, the fancy tools to, to get a good result. So we're going to tape up the fingerboard and then get on with that. 